Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Alex here with Present Moment Photographs. And tonight, as you can see, you can't really see anything. Um, and that's because we are out in Sedona shooting some astrophotography, getting some cool Milky Way shots. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna bring you guys along, kind of talk through some tips and how I shoot the Milky Way, um, what settings I use, tips, um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, before we get into more of the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like this video or any of my other stuff. Um, click the notification bell too so you can see when I release new videos and whatnot. And also, if you like the video, please like the video. Um, so yeah, let's get into it and we're going to get some sweet Milky Way shots out here in Sedona tonight. All right, so here's the trail sign and we're going to go Bell Rock Climb slash Bell Rock Pathway, uh, which is straight ahead into what you guys can't see. All right, so we're here at the base of Bell Rock. Um, you guys probably can't really see too much, but uh, we're just gonna go hike around looking for a composition, maybe a cactus, maybe a yucca, there's a tree there, and then uh, we'll try and find a nice composition uh, to get some shots with, so yeah. All right, so I got the camera set up right here and I found this composition that I like uh, with this plant in the foreground and then there's, again, can't see it, so sorry. Um, you can kind of see it on this picture, Bell Rock in the background there and the Milky Way's coming behind it. Um, so we're gonna set up here and take some shots. All right, so I got the composition all set and ready to go. So now we're gonna talk about settings. Um, so if you haven't checked out on my channel already, I got a video on how to shoot in manual and that's going to be pretty helpful for astrophotography you need to know how to shoot in manual all right y'all so the first tip here when shooting astrophotography uh very first thing i do tip number one is manual focus and look through your camera's viewfinder and find a star in the sky that you can see with it and just focus until it's bright as possible um some people suggest just going all the way to infinity and then back a little but for me i like using the viewfinder and making the star as sharp as possible because then i really know you know i can see oh this is good focus so we're going to set focus for the sky right now with my camera as the first thing all right so i set the manual focus and now uh we're going to go ahead and mess around with the settings so what i usually do is i'll set the shutter only to like three to five seconds I'll set the f-stop as low as possible and I'll crank the ISO really high just so I can take a picture um, and not sit for 20 seconds and see the composition and if I like it see if the Milky Way is there see if the stars are in focus um, so that's the next thing I'm going to do right now so the really the main thing to know is just super high ISO and short shutter speed because I'm just checking my composition right now all right so yeah let's get into talking about settings so the first settings we're going to adjust is the f-stop so you're gonna go as low as your lens can um i've got an f 2.8 and that's what i'm gonna set mine to but honestly you can get away with like an f 3.5 or an f 4. um it might not bring in as much light and be in as sharp of a picture um, but as low of an f-stop as you can go is the first thing and then the next setting is going to be your exposure time so there's this focal length rule and it's 500 divided by your focal length Will give you the maximum number of seconds you can do to not get star blur um, or trails because the stars move a lot quicker than where you can see them um, so you want to do 500 divided by whatever your focal length is um, i often use 300 instead of 500 just because i really want sharp images because if it's something i want to get printed and blown up um, you know then you don't want to have any of those trails um, and then iso i'm going to mess around with two you want it high um, you know it's important to have a high ISO and a camera that can do that in order to not get too much noise. Um, I'm gonna start with, let's say, I don't know, we'll try 5,000, 10 second shutter, f2.8, and we'll see how things look. All right, and then something else, another tip important to know is having a remote shutter can be really helpful because even just the smallest movement of me or you or whoever pushing the button when you take the photo uh, can blur the image in a long exposure. So remote shutter is super helpful. And if you don't have one, you can use your camera's auto timer for like three, five, 10 seconds, whatever it offers. Um, and that way when you push the button, that's not gonna affect the image at all. All right, so I just took a photo with the settings I talked about, F2.8, 10 seconds, and ISO 5000. And the sky looks good, but it was definitely too dark. So we're gonna do F2.8 and we're gonna do 15 seconds 
and we're gonna do ISO 10,000 and see how that turns out. And right now we're kind of just messing around. A big part of astrophotography isn't like, oh, I go in, I put this setting, this setting, and this setting, and I'll get a good picture. But it's kind of messing around with stuff because on a night like tonight, it's really dark, but maybe there's some moonlight, maybe there's some city light pollution, maybe your light painting, uh, different things are gonna affect the setting. So it's important, not necessarily knowing what you need, but knowing how to adjust them. All right, so I really like those settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple shots of the sky and in post-processing, I'll merge them together um, to make the stars less noisy. And then I'm gonna talk in here in a little bit about what I'll do for the foreground um, because that's gonna have a lot of noise and I don't want that. So we're gonna do something a little bit different for the foreground. All right, so we just got some awesome shots. Our settings are 15 seconds, uh, F2.8 and ISO 16,000, um, which is really high, but I'm shooting with a Sony a7 III and it has good low light um, output. So I'm gonna take a couple shots just on this setting and we're gonna see um, you know, how they turn out and then if we like them, we'll blend them all together in post-processing. Um, and you know, I'll try and make a video on kind of Milky Way post-processing as well. All right, so we got some cool shots of the Milky Way. And honestly, you can take single exposures um, just like I did and, and those are like very beautiful awesome shots um but if you really want clean clear crisp astrophotography shots um you know and something i think is super important in those shots is foreground i think that's just as important as the milky way being awesome and so what i'm going to do next is without moving my camera or trying my best to you know i can always fix it up a little in editing if i jiggle it a tiny bit but i try really hard not to move the camera at all um i readjust the focus i shine a little light on like a foreground object in this situation it's the yucca and i adjust the focus to be on that um and then i move up my f-stop so the depth of field is a little bit greater and then i also lower the iso so i don't get as much noise and then the shutter speed i usually set to bulb mode mold and i'll take like a five five minute image um and i'll talk here in a second about what settings i change my camera to um but this helps get a nice foreground shot to blend with the Milky Way. Um, and I really like doing this. You know, this isn't like a composite image, right? The camera hasn't moved or anything. I'm just getting kind of a focus stack pretty much, um, which I also have a video on on my channel if you want to check that out. But anyways, um, yeah, we're going to mess around with some settings and get some foreground shots here. All right, guys. So we've got our camera here. And, um, you know, like I was saying, we're trying to set up for some long exposures in the foreground. You can see the yucca plant right there, barely. The camera, bell rock is out there. And what I did was I, like I said, put the camera on bulb mode and I set a timer on my phone for five minutes. And then I changed the f-stop to 5.6, changed my focus like I was talking about to focus kind of on the yucca plant. And then I also changed that, lowered my ISO. Um, there's a bug, go away. Um, sorry. Yeah, so I changed my settings and now I'm just taking a shot of the foreground. And a lot of the times what I have to do with this is kind of just take the picture and wait five you know, minutes or 10 minutes for the camera to even process it because I've got the uh, processing on. And then once that happens, I take a look at the image and kind of see are these settings good do i need longer exposure and sometimes it really sucks because i'll sit here for 10 15 minutes and realize oh that was too dark or, oh that was too bright and i have to like redo the whole thing um but yeah i mean astrophotography is definitely and i guess a higher level of it definitely takes some patience um but yeah that's what i do for the foreground in my astro shots um yeah so that's what i do for the foreground but then again just a reminder you don't have to focus stack and blend and all this stuff you can take a single exposure astrophotography shot and get a really cool milky way um, but since i have this this yucca plant literally two feet in front of my camera it's very important to, to apply the focus stacking and do a couple different shots all right so we got some cool shots of the foreground here is a sky shot and then this is the foreground just so you can see that that's brighter and then the settings we used was we took a five minute exposure f5.6 and iso 6400 and we took two of those um, just so that we can blend them and reduce the noise a bit all 
All right, y'all, thank you so much for coming in today and checking out the video. I hope you guys learned something about astrophotography. Maybe you give it a go, or if you're already doing it, you can kind of take your game to the next level, um, or just enjoyed, you know, watching the video um, because the pictures are pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, you know, hit the subscribe and like buttons with notifications if you haven't already, and we will see you guys in the next one.